You know that weird feeling when it's it's definitely not just your Wi-Fi? You try to open an app and it just glitches out. You go to a website, it's down. Then you try another one and another. And then it hits you. Something big is happening. Well, we're going to dive into one of those moments. A time when a massive piece of the internet just broke. And for a whole lot of people, it started right here with a game. All of a sudden, millions of Fortnite players just got booted right in the middle of a match. Yeah, frustrating for sure. But this, this was just the first domino to fall. Then things got real. It hit our work lives. Slack messages, they just stopped sending. The digital heartbeat of, I mean, countless companies just stopped. Okay, so this wasn't just about a game anymore. This was starting to feel pretty serious. And then came the ultimate irony. Amazon's own retail site, you know, the global giant of e-commerce, went down. It was literally being taken out by a failure in its own invisible back-end infrastructure. You can't make this stuff up. So let's recap. A game, a critical work tool, a massive online store, plus dozens of other services, banking portals, food delivery apps, all offline at the exact same time. The question on basically everyone's mind was simple. What on earth just happened? Okay, so while engineers all over the world were scrambling, all signs pretty quickly started pointing to a, let's call it a familiar culprit. It's a name that might not mean much to most people, but in the tech world, it is absolutely infamous. US East 1. So what exactly is US East 1? Well, you can kind of think of it as one of the most important buildings on the entire internet. Seriously, it's Amazon Web Services' oldest and biggest data hub, a real physical place in Northern Virginia that acts as the invisible backbone for a huge, huge chunk of our digital world. Okay, but why is this one location so critical? I mean, it's not just that it's big. It's the default region for countless new apps. That means a ton of developers just use it without even thinking about it. And here's the real kicker. It hosts global services that even other AWS data centers depend on. It's like the central nervous system for the cloud. And that's why when US East 1 stumbles, the rest of the internet doesn't just trip, it absolutely face plants. And oh boy, did it face plant. This whole technical failure very quickly spiraled into a very human story of pure chaos, a little bit of comedy, and a whole lot of crisis. This right here, this is basically to dispatch from the digital front lines. For the engineers who were on call, this was a complete nightmare. Sev2 tickets. Those are high priority alerts. And this quote just shows the absolute scale of the panic as hundreds and then more just flooded their systems all at once. So while the engineers are fighting this massive fire, this was the reality for pretty much everyone else. A user over in Poland just wanted to do some 3D modeling, and instead, they just got errors. Bing bong, can't log in. It's just so simple, so relatable. It's the sound of hitting a digital brick wall. And this one, this just brilliantly illustrates the disruption to our free time. I mean, forget work for a second. This person was in the middle of an amazing game. 30 kills, and then poof, nothing. It's a small tragedy, maybe, but it's one that was felt by millions of people at that exact moment. And this, this is where things get truly, almost comically chaotic. Pager duty, that's the digital alarm system. It's the thing that's supposed to wake up engineers when stuff like this breaks. But guess what? It also runs on AWS. So right in the middle of the crisis, the alarm system itself broke down, leaving some teams totally in the dark. So this whole event really pulls back the curtain on a much, much bigger issue. It's a systemic thing that affects all of us every single day. And that is the kind of uncomfortable reality of just how centralized our internet has become. One user on the scene just put it perfectly. This is it. This is what happens. You know, we love to think of the internet as this sprawling, decentralized, super resilient network. But the truth is, we've put a massive number of our digital eggs into just a handful of baskets. Naturally, when something like Fortnite suddenly goes down, especially, the first question from a ton of people is this. Was this a cyber attack? Are we under attack? And look, it's a totally fair question when so much goes dark so fast. The official word from AWS was pretty clear. No, this wasn't a malicious attack. Their report talked about increased error rates. But, and this is the really important part, the impact was so widespread that it absolutely felt like an attack. It just goes to show that a single internal point of failure can be every bit as disruptive as some big coordinated assault. And of course, in the middle of all this confusion, the internet did what it does best. It made jokes. This one just went completely viral. Pushing to prod, by the way, 
That just means releasing new code live to everyone. So this tweet just perfectly captures that dark humor. Everyone speculating that this massive global chaos was caused by one simple human mistake. All right, so AWS eventually got the issue fixed and the internet slowly blinked back to life. But the outage, it left behind some really tough questions about how we build our digital world. So what happens now? Let's talk about the aftermath. So you might be asking, why doesn't everybody just build their systems to survive an outage like this one? Well, it really comes down to this fundamental trade-off, this dilemma. You've got your standard single region setup, which is way cheaper and simpler, but yeah, the risk is high. Then you have the resilient multi-region architecture, which is much safer, but it is significantly more expensive and way more complex to build and run. And this comment from a user just absolutely nails the business logic behind that choice. It's like, yeah, being resilient sounds great for the 30 something minutes a year you're actually down, but not so great for the other 364 plus days when you're just way over budget. It's a really tough calculation for any business to make. So what did we actually learn from all this? Okay, a few things. First, diversify if you can. Don't put all your digital eggs in one basket or, you know, one data center. Second, don't just trust the default settings. Actually question if deploying to US East 1 is the right move for you. Third, your disaster recovery plans need to account for actual humans in a crisis. And fourth, and this one's a little bit of dark humor for all the on-call engineers out there, stock up on snacks. You're going to need them. And that really leaves us with this one final thought. We all rely on the cloud, right? And it feels so abstract and infinite. But this outage was a brutal reminder that it's made of very real physical things in physical places. And those things can and absolutely do break. This whole thing was a massive wake-up call. The real question is, are any of us actually ready for the next one?